Oh, okay, welcome back. Am I audible? How about now? Yeah. Okay, so uh, welcome back. Good morning. Uh, we were discussing uh, negative feedback with the idea of replacing with the idea of uh, trying to figure out a way of getting a stable voltage gain, but the voltage gain has to be more than one, right? We know how to get a reasonable uh, amplifier with a I mean, reasonable voltage buffer with gain of less than one, but we wanted to get an, uh, we get, wanted to kind of get an amplifier with a voltage gain, which definitely needs to be more than one, but it has to be stable. By stable, we mean that it should be invariant of ambient changes. For that, we cannot use a, a common source amplifier. So we used, uh, we referred, uh, uh, we tried to use negative feedback and we came up with the circuit on the left. Uh, then we said that, hey, we have to replace that summer with, uh, with, uh, with something that we already know. Uh, and the, how did we approach it? We approached it from the fact that, say, this voltage here has to be VI minus VF, where VF is the paidback voltage and this is the error voltage. And this is going to the input of a transistor. And in the small signal sense, the transistor current is, is kind of proportional to this VI minus VF. Then we said that, okay, if we have to replace this difference or uh, the summing block, which takes the difference of two voltages, we already know that our transistor uh, responds to the difference of voltages between the gate and source. Then why don't we apply VI to, uh, to, the, uh, to the gate and uh, this uh, VF to the source? And that uh, that might uh, and that might uh, wait, hold on. Is this the correct way of biasing? Ah, okay. So this uh, this is to be minus right the way because the uh, summation is in the opposite direction. Then uh, what we uh, what we essentially need is uh, a, a contraption which which can uh, through which we can apply the VF to the to the gate and VI to the source. Right, and then we said, okay, we'll talk about the sign changes later on. But if we have to uh, get access to both the, if we have to get access to both the terminals of of my uh, common source amplifier, that is, the gate and the source. Okay, I know gate is easy. I can simply apply the signal, assuming things are biased properly. But we can, if we have to apply something at the source, we cannot simply stick it in as the source is rounded. Right, so we'll have to bias the source. You have to make the source accessible. And given that we know how to uh, bias a transistor using constant current source, we pick one, uh, which is I uh, apply a current current sink in this case at the source, which means our source becomes accessible. And then we buffered the voltage VF into the source, right? And this current, this buffer, this, this was a voltage buffer. And this voltage buffer was nothing but, again, the same circuit that we have studied multiple times. Okay, so this buffer was needed because if we, uh, so if we directly connect these two, right? If we directly connect these two, what's going to happen? This voltage VF, ideally I want this to be V naught over K, right? But if we directly connect these two, looking here, it's a low impedance node, right? So that will not be V naught over K, so will not be doing a summation, difference between VI and V naught over K. We'll be doing a difference between VI and something else, not V not over here. Yes. So essentially, in the incremental sense, what if you have V not, and let's say this is K minus one R. Yeah, you tell me what's going to happen. Correct, right? So there will be a current division. So if this is K minus one R, this R. So let's say I have a low impedance. In the incremental sense, you can assume that to be grounded. If this R is, let's say this is some uh, R in. If R in is much less than R, then what's going to happen to this node? This node definitely will not be V not over K, right? That node voltage will move because R in is loading. 
And since RN, I mean, RN will not load if RN is much higher than this resistor stack. So if RN is much higher than the thevenin resistance looking in, right? Then it will not load, but if it's not, then it will load. But in this case, the way we have set up the circuit, it's supposed to be looking low impedance. And it's supposed, uh, the resistor stack is supposed to be high impedance. So this will definitely load. So we need to isolate, right? We need to isolate. So we, for that, we needed a voltage buffer. And the characteristics of a voltage buffer is input impedance has to be very high, output impedance has to be very low. And that is something we have studied. And we said that if these two transistors, that is, let's say this is M1 and M2, they are identical, right? If they are identical, they will behave twice and twice identically. So uh, in that case, uh, there will not be any current through this through this connection. So that's more or less auto biases automatically, right? So bias is not a problem. Uh, but then we stop here. But the problem that some of you pointed out in the last class is the fact that, see, I mean, this, the sense of the feedback doesn't seem to be right, right? I mean, how do I, if I, if you don't know anything, how do you go about figuring out the sense of feedback? You'll have to, you see that there is a loop here. There is a loop. So you break, hypothetically, you break the loop at any point, apply an excitation and see whatever comes back is in the same direction or in the opposite direction. If it's in the same direct direction, then obviously the sense of the feedback is not right because the whole purpose of the loop is reduce any any error. So we can we can do that exercise. Let let me break it here. I mean, you can break it anywhere; it doesn't really matter. So let me break it here. And let's say I I apply a hypothetical increment of that voltage. So this voltage will increase. If this voltage increases, what's going to happen to this current? It will increase or decrease? High or low? High, right? It will go up. So if that voltage increases, this current goes up. This current only can go through. And this voltage goes up, right? So you see that there is a reinforcement effect, which means this is in positive feedback. So hooking up the circuit in this way will not definitely not work. And that, that, um, uh, that makes sense because uh, we see that there is a there is this inversion here which we kind of got rid of by by connecting the uh, by connecting the network the way I have done in the right hand side. So what is the easy fix? Okay, this going around the loop business. Okay, so so let's say I apply an excitation here. Right, so it goes up. So what's going to happen to VF? It will go up. If this goes up, what is what's going to happen to this current? It will increase or decrease? It will increase, right? So this current will increase. Where will this current go into? This current will go into the resistor. What will this happen to this voltage? It will increase, right? So, so this there is a reinforcing effect on the loop, right? If there's an excitation, whatever comes back is increasing that excitation even further. But the loop is supposed to negate any, any change. So this is not a negative feedback. So if I, so which means that I have to change the sign of operation somewhere. I have to flip the sign of the operation somewhere. So how do I flip the sign of the operation? We can use another amplifier, but can we do something with this amplifier itself? See, ultimately we want this. Okay, so now if I if I have to find out what is this current, so let's say this, I mean, in terms of VF and VI, what is this current? How will you figure out what is this current? Superposition, right? So let's assume only VF exists and VI doesn't exist. Then what will that current be? We did it in the last class. You can just look up the notes and tell me. So this will be GM by two times VF in the direction shown. If only VI exists, 
and then it will be uh, opposite direction gm by 2 gi right so superposition of these two so effective current is gm by 2 times vf minus vi flowing up so this volt so this voltage effectively will be gm by 2 vf minus vi times this rd parallel this kr right so now what we want we want to flip the sign of this vf and vi right because in the way that has been, the network has been set up it looks like it is in positive feedback so if i have to flip the sign of uh, vf and vi i can simply interchange the positions of application of vf and vi right okay how will you see but mathematically, do you think it's fine if I, instead of uh, wherever I have applied VF, I will apply VI, and wherever I apply VI, I will apply VF. If I do that, will the will the sign of the overall negative feedback overall loop change? So what I am saying is, instead of VF, I will apply minus VF. Instead of VI, I will apply plus plus VI. Then obviously it changes, right? So that is as far as the symbolic representation is concerned, but we'll have to do that using using circuit. So this is equivalent to saying that whichever node I had applied, I had selected to apply VF, I will apply VI. And whichever node I have decided to apply VI, I will apply VF. Okay, so, so how did you, I mean, how did I get this VF minus VI? So I had applied, so I had two terminals. I said, don't think of, I mean, now think of in terms of box. I have a VI, I have a VF. And something that is coming out is proportional to VI minus VF. Okay. So if I apply VF, VI here and VF here, what will come out? I haven't made, I haven't made that change in the circuit, but, uh, so if, if we have to make the change accordingly, what I'm essentially saying is that in this box, in the box that I have just drawn, if I interchange the positions of VF and VI, I will get VF, we will interchange the um, sign of the output. Pardon? Okay, so that divide by two happens because of, uh, the loading effect, right? So let me come back to that after a couple of minutes. Okay. So, so if I forget, remind me again. Uh, so, uh, so okay. So essentially, uh, are you with me till now? If I say, if I say that flipping the input changes the sign of the output. Okay, fine. So now, what is the input in in the circuit that we have? One input is here. I mean, input to this new block. One input is here. Another input is here. Right, I'll just flip them. So what I'll do is I will not connect it here. I'll apply VI here. And I will take this VF and apply here. Right? So that will change the that will change the sign of feedback. Okay, and now it becomes negative feedback. Okay. Uh, a more uh, neat way of sketching this is to say that so let's say is to say that I will keep VI and VF this way, but note that wherever, whichever branch has this VF has the RD, right? So I will shift the RD to this side. And this becomes my VF. We didn't do any change, I basically restructured the 
that's okay. Okay. Make sense? Okay, now coming back to his question, why it is gm by 2? Can anybody explain why is this gm by 2? Why is that current that I had sketched on the top figure gm by 2 times vi minus vf? Yeah, so so it's so now consider this to be in isolation. I mean, this block in isolation. This is a very important block. In this case, in this when used in a negative feedback loop, this is an error amplifier, right? This is amplifying the error. But this block in isolation also has a very unique name. It's called differential amplifier because it's amplifying the difference between two voltages, right? It's producing an output which responds to the difference of the two voltages. If there, if both voltages, uh, both inputs, right? Let's say, let me call this e one input. Let me call this B two. If both of them move in unison in the same direction, will will you see, see any change in the output? Is the question clear? So let me let me sketch it differently, right? So maybe I'm confusing you with too many details. So these two current sources I can cloud together and make a new current source. We call this V1, let me call this V2. So what is this voltage? This voltage is proportional to what? V1 minus V2. Now we are questioning the proportionally constant. So are you comfortable with the fact that this voltage is proportional to V1 minus V2? Or do you want me to repeat why? Yes or no? Am I audible? Okay, fine. So if this pro voltage is proportional to V1 minus V2, if V1 increases and V2 increases by the same amount, will that voltage move? No, right? So it only responds to the difference of input voltages. So it's called a differential amplifier. This is called a Or called popularly known as DFAM. Okay, so it only responds to the uh, uh, to the difference between the inputs. It doesn't respond to any any uh, uh, any common input, right? If both V1 and V2 increases by the same amount, you will not see any excitation at the output. Now let's come back to his question of why did we get that GM by two term? So this is GM. This is GM. So when we are doing increment and analysis, we are inherently saying it's a linear circuit. So which means we can use it for superposition. Let me ground V2. If I ground V2, what I'm interested in is if I excite V1, what will be that current, right? So let me call this M1, let me call this M2. So now it's note that the source of M1 is loaded. Source of M1 is loaded with the source of M2. Right. So if I only consider M1, what am I seeing? I am seeing this V1, and there is some something loaded here. What is that loading? That loading is nothing but whatever is the incremental impedance looking to the right. Right. What is the in incremental impedance looking here? What is the incremental impedance looking into the source of, of your transistor? One over GM. If I neglect the RDS, right? If I neglect the RDS, it's pure play one over GM. So essentially, this is one over GM. Now this is GM. This is one over GM. What will be this current? This will be GM times. If this is R, let's say GM times one by GM times. Sorry, GM over one plus GM, right? So we have again done this multiple times through assignments and lectures. So in this case, R is equal to one over GM. So this becomes GM by two, so VI, V1, V1, right? So essentially the incremental current that will flow this side is GM by two times V1. And now if I switch back and apply V2 and ground V1, the incremental current that will flow on the other side will be 
gm by 2 times v2. Superposition of those two is gm by 2 v1 minus v2. Okay. Okay, great. So this, so we'll spend some time discussing this, this differential amplifier, because it's an extremely crucial block, building block of almost all analog circuits that you will see uh, from here on. So it's, it pays, uh, I mean, it makes sense to invest some time in this. Yes. You mean from here to here? Okay. Uh, okay, if I understand your question correctly, what you were saying is how did I come up with this, right? Okay, so do you agree with the, okay, do you agree with this assertion? If I interchange the inputs, the output flips. Right, so that's what I have done in here. I have interchanged the inputs. Correct. Yeah. So now you can think of this. Uh, right. You get the jacket on the top. Yes. Which one? GM by two part here. Okay. So, so let's say you have anything like this, and you have some network connected, right? So, how will you go about finding out what will be the incremental current? For this, you need to know what is the impedance looking here. If you don't know, there is no point. I mean, you'll not be able to find. So what we did, we found out the impedance that happens to be one over GM, correct? So now let's say in case of one over GM, this impedance is R. So you solve the KCL at this node, you will get a current, you'll get a current, right? And that incremental current will be GM times V1 by one plus GM, right? So now basically replace R with one over GM. <laughs> So yeah, so these are some of these uh, very useful expressions you should buy hard, right? So, so that you, you don't spend too much time thinking uh, what will be this, what will be that, right? So like this is similar to the analogy I give is if I ask you what is four times six, you don't go four plus four plus four plus four plus four. You know four times six is 24 because it helps doing more complicated things, right? More involved. Yeah. Same analogy here. Some basic structures, you need to know what is the current if I apply voltage here, what will be the impedance looking from the train, what will be the impedance looking from the source and so on. Okay, fine. So let's uh, investigate, uh, 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 spend some time on this. So note that this, we came up with this structure because we wanted to use a common source amplifier, but we wanted access to two terminals. So it, it makes sense that this structure behaves like a common source amplifier, but with a, uh, with a GM, equivalent GM, which is equal to GM by two, right? So your output, the short circuit current, for example, if I find out the, try to find out the short circuit current here, let me not do this here. So, okay. <laughs> If I try to find out the short circuit current in the incremental sense, what will the short circuit current be? What is this current? GM by two, V1 minus V2. This current will flow into the short. So this short circuit current will be GM by two, V1 minus V2, right? In case of a common source amplifier, in case of a common source amplifier, if I if I could have had access to these two terminals, what would short circuit current have been in the opposite direction, obviously. And let me call this, let me apply V2 here and V1 here, just to ensure the directions are same. 
this current would have been gm times v1 minus v2. There is a factor of two we are losing because there is a buffering effect, right? There is a buffering effect at this node. But nevertheless, the equivalent transconductance, the equivalent transconductance of the structure on the left is equal to gm by two. If I compare it with respect to a standalone common source amplifier. Okay. So there is a there is a uh, notation that is used to, to identify differential amplifier, and the notation is this. And this current is if this has some equivalent transconductance GM, this current that it will spit out will be GM times V1 minus V2, right? So this is a very popular way of symbolizing a differential amplifier, okay? And uh, by the way, what is the output impedance of this differential amplifier? So let me, let me sketch the, let me, so if this is short circuited, this will be the scenario. I, I need to find out the output impedance at this node. So what is the first thing that I should do? Short, firstly, desensitize inputs. Right, there are two inputs v1, v2. I desensitize okay. And at the node, I am trying to find out the output dependence. I have to apply a test voltage in the incremental sense. By the way, if, even though I am sketching everything on top of the full network, I am sure that by now you are comfortable that when I say incremental, you can see that there is a GM associated with it and so on, right? So, yes. Yeah, I will show that. That's the next. So, ah, okay. So that's the next part, right? So if this is the V test, so I am looking. I am trying to figure out what is this I test. Okay. So now uh, the question that came up before the class was: sometimes I ask you what is the impedance looking up, sometimes I ask you what is the impedance looking down, and sometimes I ask you what is the total impedance, right? Equivalent impedance. In this case, if I ask you what is the impedance looking up. What will that be? It will be RD because the, the current that is flowing up is V test by RD, right? So essentially the impedance looking up is RD, that's easy. What is the impedance looking down? If I neglect channel and modulation, what is the impedance looking down? Infinity, right? But now we know that we cannot neglect channel and modulation if ultimately we are getting infinity, right? If it's something else, then okay, I can neglect RDS with respect to a smaller value but I cannot neglect RDS with respect to infinity. So we'll have to figure out what is this, what is, uh, uh, what is the impedance looking now? So, so now let's assume that I have, let me sketch it just slightly bigger. Now we're trying to find out what is the looking down impedance. Essentially, we are trying to figure out what will be the impedance, what will be the effect, let's say this I test just splits into two parts. I am looking up and I be looking down. Essentially, now we are trying to find out what is V test by I2. That is the impedance looking down. Okay. So if I have to find out the impedance looking down, what should I do? Let me simplify it further. So let's say that you have these RDS1. RDS2 and the transistor itself is a is a GM is an ideal GM and in order to model incremental resistance I have simply added this RDS okay so now what will in order to figure out what is the impedance looking down from the drain what is the first thing that you are looking for if you want to make your calculation easy if the source is grounded let's say what will be the impedance looking from the top No, right? If the source is grounded, the special source is grounded, what will be the impedance? RDS1. Right, yeah, it will be RDS1, but the source is not grounded, which means you need to know what is connected to the source. Correct? 
So how do I know what is connected to the source in terms of impedance? I have to look into the source and see what is connected to it. So I have to, I have to look, look into here and see what is connected this side, right? So this is it. Mark this one M1, this is M2. So what will be the impedance looking into the source of M1? This, no. RDS2 parallel is on over GM1, right? So if, if I didn't have RDS2, I would have gotten one over GM, right? Within the presence of RDS2, I, I think I reverse the signs, right? This should have been RDS1, that should be RDS2. RDS1, RDS2. So this impedance looking up will be one over GM parallel RDS1. Now, can you neglect RDS1 with respect to 1 over GM? Which is higher? 1 over GM is a bigger impedance or RDS1 is a bigger impedance? RDS is a bigger impedance, right? So parallel combination of two, I can neglect the higher one. So this is approximately equal to 1 over GM. Okay. So now what, what do I have? Now I shift my focus to M2. I shift my focus to M2 and then see what does it look like. And I'm trying to figure out what is the impedance looking from the drain of M2, looking down, okay. And you assume GM1 equal to GM2, RDS1 equal to RDS2, identical transistors. So, so what is the what is the impedance looking down from the drain of a transistor if you have something connected at the at the source? You can add, but there is an expression, right? So, for example, we, we did this in a couple of classes back. Correct. Yeah, so impedance looking from top will be the summation of these two impedances that, that is obvious. G, one over GM, all, make all of them identical. One over GM plus RDS plus the gain of intrinsic gain of M2 times one over GM, right? So intrinsic gain of, uh, of M2 is GM times RDS times one over GM. Okay, so this becomes one over GM plus two RDS, which is approximately equal to two RDS. Okay, so this is the output impedance of my differential amplifier. So, so essentially, pardon? Because we want to abstract that uh, this differential amplifier into one block, which has an, basically we are trying to notarize this block. We try to, trying to figure out what is the effective short circuit current, effective output impedance, so that my future analysis becomes easy. Okay, so the the equivalent uh, short circuit current is this, and equivalent impedance becomes RDS parallel RD. Right, impedance looking down is two RDS, impedance looking up is RD, so this becomes RD parallel two RDS. Okay, so. So now if I have to, I mean, plug this symbol back into my feedback network, if I have to plug this symbol back into my feedback network, what will it, what will it look like? This is some GM. Yes. Which resistance? Ah, okay, so what is the impedance looking down? We got two RDS. Looking up is RD. Right? So this looking up is RD. Looking down is two RDS. It's a parallel combination of those two. No, no, you, so when you are trying to figure out what is the impedance, you are not applying V1 and V2, right? You are desensitizing this. Desensitizing the input in the first place. This, correct, correct, yes. Yes. 
Correct. Okay, so I'm not sure I understood the question. So let me try to frame it in the way I understood it. So this is a block. This is V1, this is V2. I am trying to figure out what is the equivalent not an notonized version of this, right? So let's say this is V0. What will be this ISC? What will be this R out? So that I get V0 here. That R out we found, right? And you are okay with the fact that R out is 2RDS parallel RD? Okay. Are you okay with the fact that ISC is GM by 2 times V1 minus V2? Okay, so this becomes gm by 2 v1 minus v2. So then both things you understand. So what's the problem? You mean conceptualization of this structure? Okay. Can you be a bit more precise? You are talking about this block? Hold on. Okay, so correct. That's a current source. Fine. Yeah, yeah. That so this doesn't have an output impedance. This has an ideal current source, right? So you can think of that current source to be this current source. Okay, but there is, I mean, this is a dependent current source. It depends on two inputs. So that's why the, the notation is, a symbol is that. Okay. So, so, okay. So now I understand what the confusion is. So for the, for the rest of the class, uh, if you are not following this discussion, for example. So if I say something like this, V1, V2, what is the output? It's not a trick question. What is the output? Huh? A times V1 minus V2. This is the voltage control voltage source, right? It's an ideal voltage control voltage source. That's what this symbol means, right? It's a voltage amplifier. So the corresponding thing for a transconductance is this. If I short this output, this current will be if this I call it GM, GM times V1 minus V2. Okay. So you, if, you are, if your voltage source is not ideal, it has an output resistance. And that output resistance is modeled as a series resistance in with respect to uh, a series resistance with the ideal amplifier. If your GM is not ideal, if your transconductance is not ideal, it is modeled with a resistance in parallel, right? This is all out. So this is nothing but a not an equivalent of this. This is exactly this. Just that it shows two inputs separately. Okay. And this is useful because, I mean, now I have uh, an input which gives the difference. Uh, I have a block which gives me the difference for uh, the current which is proportional to the difference. And I can express it symbolically so that I can now use it in a negative feedback loop. I can use this symbol in a negative feedback loop. Uh, with the understanding that there is a differential amplifier plugged inside this symbol. Okay. Capital GM in this case is related to the small GM by GM by two. Okay, is that question? Right. No, we haven't yet made. So this I drew the stuff on the bot top just to ensure that if you, all of you understand what this difference maker means, right? So it, this is still not a voltage control voltage source. This this contraption is not a voltage control. This is not a VCVS because this R out is quite high, right? So in 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 case of if you want to make a VCVS, the output impedance has to be very low. VCVS, you can think of it as a battery. 
whatever you connect at the output, it doesn't change the voltage across it. That's a VCGS, that's a voltage source, right? At the output side. In this case, it's definitely not. In the in, in case of this, um, uh, in case of the circuit on the uh, topology on the bottom, it's definitely not because this R out is quite high. So, which means that if I connect anything here, some RL, the voltage at the output will be GM times R out parallel RL. And if R out is much higher than RL, the output voltage depends on RL. Right? That's not a VCVS. A voltage source output should not depend on whatever you connect. Right? Yeah, yeah, these two are not same. Even though I mean, one might say I can some combinations of these out, uh, some combinations of R out and everything, uh, R out and R L can under some certain combinations you you can interchange both those two. Again, goes back to that assignment to black box whether it's a VCBS, whether it's a voltage source or a current source. Same thing. Okay. Okay. So. So now let's plug this back into our negative feedback network and see how it looks like. And let me know. Let me uh, you can let me know whether this circuit seems familiar when drawn in this way. So what were we doing? Let me go back to this di gh terminology. So what we were doing was, this was VF. So what I'll do, I will combine, essentially we combined the summer and the amplifier, right? This amplifier was a common source amplifier. Then we did something on top of it so that the summer also becomes a part of the, of the amplifier. And we got, we got this. So what I'll do, I'll just replace it with this. At the output, I have some R out. Yeah. Have you seen the sub this type of circuit anywhere in some contraption? Right? This is like a non-inverting amplifier. Right? With using ideal op amps. Right, so this differential amplifier is again a poor man's op amp. Okay, so you don't get too much gain, but you, you can you can have access to two terminals. It, it 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 gives you an output which is proportional to the difference, right? And given that if your R out is high and R R is large enough, you can get decent amount of gain. And you put in a negative feedback, it be, behaves almost like a almost like I mean, uh, uh, not an ideal op amp, but but an op amp. Okay. Okay, fine. Uh, any questions? So my recommendation will be get used to using those standard topologies of what is the impedance looking into the drain and the source. If something is connected to the source, something is connected to the drain. What will be the short circuit current, right? Because we'll not get it. We, you cannot afford to go into analyzing KCLs for each of these small circuits, right? You, those you have to use these as a uh, as a building block, similar to no learning uh, tables, right? Multiplication tables. Okay, fine. Thanks. <laughs>